Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today I'm gonna give you guys what I think are the best techniques for recording rap, hip hop vocals for songs. Just to be clear, this video is about the actual art of recording your performances. So whatever equipment that I use, whether it's microphone, reflection filter, pop filter, etc., none of that really matters for this video. You can use whatever equipment you choose. Today we're gonna focus on the actual technique of recording. So let's start off. First and foremost, you definitely wanna have a pop filter. The pop filter is extremely crucial because it reduces your plosives, your p, b, your p's, your b's, and any of those sounds that have a loud pop, this is a pop filter that reduces that. Now, when it comes to actually having your pop filter on the mic, I actually have it just a few, maybe two, three fingers away from the microphone, enough that as you perform into it, there's space that actually allows you to diffuse your pops, but not too far where you're too far away from the mic. And the distance from your mouth to the pop filter can vary as well. For me, I know I don't have a very deep voice and there's something called the proximity effect when you're very close on a microphone. The closer that you are to a mic, the more bass it can introduce. Now, for some people that can actually sound good. Like for me, I don't have a lot of bass in my voice. So I actually tend to think that I sound better and that's my preferred sound for my music. I sound better closer to the mic. Now, some people that already have a lot of bass, that's not gonna sound good, that's gonna be very muddy. So you're gonna wanna get further away. For me, and my personal voice, I like to be roughly about a fist away from the pop filter at the furthest. But usually, this is where I'm at. I'm about maybe half an inch to an inch away from the pop filter. You're gonna have to figure out what sounds better for your voice, what distance you should be at. Another very important thing to do before you start recording is make sure that you have nothing in your pockets, you have no excessive jewelry, so you don't want keys, for example. Keys make a lot of noise. Even if they're in your pocket, you have a pretty tight pocket. Some artists actually get very dynamic when they perform and it can start to introduce noise if it shakes around in your pocket. So I remove anything that can make noise. Cell phones, I put fully on silent, not even on vibrate. The vibrations can also get picked up by the mic. So I put full silent and I put my phone probably about five, 10 feet away from me. You also wanna make sure that your headphones are not super loud. As you play back the beat so you can record, if your headphones are way too loud or if you don't have good isolated headphones that do not allow much bleed of audio out from the headphones, it could get introduced into the microphone. So make sure that you keep your headphones at a volume where you feel comfortable listening to your music, but not too loud so you don't have that bleed in the microphone. Now, another very important thing before you start recording is to make sure that you actually have your beat in the actual timeline of your DAW, your digital audio workstation, to be set with the exact same BPM as your beat. So now your bars and beats will all be lined up properly. I'm gonna assume you already know how to count bars. Generally, verses are 16 bars and they're split up four, 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 so four sets of four. Now, when I record, especially if I'm not the one mixing in this software, if I have to send out my vocals to someone else so that they can mix it, I like to make sure that I record with a four bar pre-roll. So essentially, I start recording four bars before where I actually want my lyrics to hit. And I make sure that I'm on a snap grid in my DAW, because if you are on a slip where you can click anywhere on your timeline, you're not gonna be aligned at a specific point. And I find it easier for audio engineers and people mixing the song to work with a specific start point that's perfectly on a bar. So now I'm gonna actually record and show you how I do that. The beat drops fully at bar five and I'm gonna start at bar five. Now, another method that I use when I record vocals is I don't record my entire verse in one take. Most hip hop artists, including myself when I started, had the mentality of you have to spit your full 16 bars, your full verse in one take. And if you mess up, you either do it again or you can punch in, which is where you just redo a part that you mess up on. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of the punching in because sometimes you can hear the difference of your first recording and then a punched in recording where maybe your tone or your flow isn't exact. So I don't like doing punch-ins. And I also don't like doing full verse recordings in one take because you start to lose your breath, especially in hip hop, because it can be so wordy. Now the technique that I actually use when recording my verses is something I learned from singers, specifically R&B. They never record a full verse in one take. 
When I came across that, I decided to try to do that for hip hop. And throughout the years, I've seen that that is actually the most efficient way to make the best sound with the best delivery for a hip hop verse as well. So I do four bars at a time. I only record four bars, stop when I got the perfect one, and then I move on to the next four bars. If I'm doing a recording and I mess up on something, I'll redo those entire four bars. And I'll redo it over and over and over until I get the perfect take. Sometimes it takes me 10 minutes to record one good four bar take. Sometimes I can do it in the first or second take. It really depends on you and how much of a perfectionist you are. Now, when it comes to having your headphones on, I've already talked about the bleed. Another thing that is important, I'm gonna take off my hat for this, is I like to have like half my ear out. Now, a lot of musicians do this. Most hip hop artists that I know actually don't. They prefer to have their headphones on. The problem with that for me is that you hear too much of the beat and it gets you a little too hyped up. From take to take or from section to section, four bars, four bars, four bars, your delivery can start to develop a little different. Sometimes you become more aggressive or more intense or more loud because you're starting to get more and more into just the beat that you forget really what you sound like. So this actually allows me, by having a half ear off, to check myself to make sure that I'm not changing up my sound in a way that I don't want it to change. Now, if you have flow switch-ups or, or variations in your verses and you want switch-ups, cool. But your tone, your delivery, your performance, if you wanna to try to keep a consistent rate, this seems to work best for me. So I'm recording myself, I don't have another person in a different room where they can play back the audio through their speakers and then talk to me through the, the headset. I am recording myself in the same room that I'm actually controlling the DAW, so I gotta make sure that my speakers are turned down all the way or off. And then now I have my track that I'm about to record my first four bars armed and ready to go and as soon as I press record, it's gonna start playing at my choice, bar five, so I hear four bars of this beat, and then I'm gonna go in. Now, when it comes to actually performing your lyrics, if you are the type of person that can memorize all your lyrics and you don't have to hold a paper, that's great. So I have to actually have my lyrics written out or printed out. I actually type all my lyrics, so everything for me is printed out on paper, and when I actually go and read out my lyrics, I make sure that I follow the rules that I talked about earlier for my personal voice, the distance that I have. And now, one thing that I've noticed a lot of people mess up on is they do this. They put their lyrics to the side, which makes them turn their head this way. So now, what ends up happening is you start performing and your words come out across the side this way, so it's not going direct to the microphone. Now you start to lose a lot of the fullness of your recording by doing this, because now you're off axis. In order to keep that direct performance into the diaphragm of the microphone, you gotta be straight. And what I do here is I actually put the lyrics above me without moving my head up here, because then again, I'm overshooting the microphone. I keep my mouth here, straight pointed at the microphone, and I just move my eyes up. All right, so now that I've gone pretty much over all the main techniques, I'm gonna start recording just to show you I'm gonna do these first four bars, armed. I hear the beat in here, no other sound. I'm on bar two, uh. Get myself a little hyped up, uh, check, check, yeah. I got venomous saliva, so I'm known to spit a killer flow. Many did are pretty dope, but nobody is ill of the, uh. <clears throat> I messed up. There are a lot of people that when they mess up, they'll keep that take and then record another take. They mess up, keep that take. And there are people that Frankenstein their recordings where they'll take bits and pieces from a bunch of different takes to get the perfect verse. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of doing that. I do four bars at a time and I don't move on until I have the perfect take. So for me, I'm actually just gonna delete that take even though it started off, I got a bar and a half that was solid. I don't care how good it is. I can nail the four to make sure that it's perfect. So it's good to have one or two good solid takes as a backup just in case. For me, just because I'm such a perfectionist, I'm just like, nah, I don't keep anything except for the one good take. Yeah, uh, getting ready, just getting my voice, uh, yeah. I got venomous saliva, so I'm known to spit a killer flow. Many did are pretty dope, but nobody is illa though. So the odds ain't in your favor, do the mathematics. The result is your carcass feeding a pack of maggots. That's four bars. 
I'll stop there, play it back. If I like the way it sounded, move on to the next four bars. If I don't, delete again, retake. Also make sure that you do not clip. Do not have your gain for your mic too loud that you're clipping and going into the red. Do not pass that limit on your audio level. So you want to keep it a little lower, but kind of hot, a hot signal where it's, it's loud. You don't want it too low because then you have to pump up the volume and then that introduces a lot of the floor noise, a lot of the ambient background noise, which is going to kill your recording as you start to mix it. So let me show you my waveform here. You can see it's not super loud, but it's definitely noticeable present. And there are parts where my words are getting hotter, louder. That's just normal. But I'm not clipping on anything. If you're clipping, it's going to distort. That clipping digital distortion is horrible. So you're going to either need to delete that and redo or punch in on that specific word. But again, like I said, sometimes punching in doesn't always sound that great. Mixing, mastering, and the way you want your final product to sound is totally up to you. This video is about the recording technique. And I feel like I've given you guys pretty much all the techniques and tips on what I think will get you the best recording, where you don't have parts where you are out of breath or when some of your words are maybe not delivered properly because you're trying to get everything in one take. By doing four bars at a time, by making sure you don't have anything that creates noise like jewelry, earrings, keys, etc. All this stuff is going to help your recording sound a lot more clean, crisp, and give you that professional delivery. Now, I do have a lot more videos coming soon where I'm going to go more into detail on different aspects of recording or mixing, but this is just something I wanted to do that can give you a brief overview of how to get the recording, get your performance out, and get you on the right track to making a great sounding song. The actual equipment itself does not matter. You can use whatever equipment you want. Obviously, some equipment is going to sound better than other equipment, but the technique is the focus of this video. However, if you are interested in getting any of the equipment that I use, I do have links in the description where you can purchase from either b &H Photo or Amazon. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please drop a like on this video. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.